Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a software engineer working on Flutter Engine. And I'm Leah, a product manager for Flutter. If you tuned in to Flutter Forward, or you've been reading our release blogs, you've probably seen the name Impeller thrown around quite a bit. But what actually is Impeller? And how does it work under the hood? Well, today you're gonna find out. Impeller is a new renderer within Flutter's engine. Until now, Flutter has been using something called Skia. The problem is Skia wasn't designed for Flutter. It has a ton of rendering features built for a wide range of devices, which means that it's not always optimized for Flutter's needs. Enter Impeller, Flutter's new renderer. We built Impeller to specifically focus on the rendering needs of Flutter applications. And our main goal was to eliminate jank or any stuttering that's happening inside of your app. This way, it'll always look and feel great for your end users. Now for everyone who's watching who's not a graphics engineer, you might be wondering, what's a renderer? Well, a renderer is software that helps you translate your UI code into the pixels that you actually see on the screen. So say you have a simple Flutter app like the one that I'm showing here. In the Flutter framework, your tree of widgets is backed by a tree of render objects. Render objects contain the instructions for how to actually lay out and paint the widgets. These instructions are given to the engine and stored in an ordered list of simple commands called a display list. And now this is where things get interesting. The engine is responsible for using one of the available renderers, either Impeller or Skia, to draw this display list to a surface texture or a grid of pixel values that can be displayed to the screen. It leverages the GPU by setting up a collection of things called render pipelines that can be used to render everything in the display list. So let's dig into the details. Before we can use a render pipeline, we first need to take all the paths drawn by the display list and tessellate them into sets of triangles. Then each vertex or point on the triangle is passed through something called a vertex shader. Now a shader is just a small piece of code that gets executed on the graphics device. And in this case, the shaders are internal, meaning that they're a part of the Flutter engine's code base. But us Flutter developers can author our own shaders too. So more on that later. So the vertex shader takes the vertices that make up the Flutter logo and it moves them to the place on the screen where we actually want to draw them. And now the Flutter logo is in the right place and we begin iterating through all the triangles. So let's zoom in a little more. For each triangle, we figure out the specific pixels that are inside it, and this is called rasterization. Then a few checks are run for each of these squares to determine if we actually need to compute a color for it. For Impeller, these checks are really important, so we'll be coming back to this in a bit. So now all those pixels that are in the triangle are passed through a fragment shader. A fragment shader is another snippet of code, but this time it takes the vertex shader's output and computes a color. And like I mentioned before, Flutter developers can override this by creating our own shaders to create really neat effects using the fragment program API. Anyway, back to our render pipeline. Lastly, the output colors are blended with the color that's already been drawn. In this case, our blending was really simple and we just replaced the color. And that's how things get rendered on the GPU. Now over to Brandon to talk through how these render pipelines are actually implemented in Impeller. Thanks, Leah. Impeller has a layered architecture where each layer uses the one below it to accomplish its job. Before, Leah showed an example of how the Flutter logo widget gets converted into a display list. In this example, the display list just contains a few operations to position it in the center of the screen, along with four draw path ops, one for each of the quads in the logo. So let's take this display list and draw it using Impeller. First, all of the display list operations are dispatched to something called Ikes. Ikes is the topmost layer of Impeller, and it mainly consists of a canvas drawing API. By the way, the name Ikes is just Skia in reverse. 
The job of Ikes is to take high-level commands like draw path and draw image from display list and turn them into simpler, self-contained drawing operations called entities. And this is where the next layer comes in, the entities framework. In our example, the four draw path ops from the Flutter logo each end up getting an entity of their own. Each entity contains a bunch of properties that every single drawing operation needs, like a transformation matrix that encodes the position, rotation, and scale. Every entity also gets a contents object assigned to it, which contains the actual GPU instructions needed to draw the entity. There's a contents for drawing solid colors, images, gradients, text, clips, everything that Flutter apps can draw. Sometimes we even have multiple specialized contents that draw the same thing using different algorithms with different performance characteristics. That way, Ikes can pick and choose the most efficient rendering algorithm depending on the situation. In this case, all four of the Flutter logo's quads are just filled with solid colors, and so each of their entities get a solid color contents assigned to them. Now, we need to spell out these instructions in a way that the GPU can understand. Because Flutter apps can run on a bunch of different platforms, Impeller needs some kind of translation layer to communicate with the GPU. This is where the layer below the Entities framework comes in. I'll refer to this as the Hardware Abstraction layer. This layer is just a thin abstraction that talks to the graphics driver through various standard graphics APIs, like Metal on iOS and Vulkan on Android. Okay, now we're ready to start telling the GPU exactly what to do. Remember those render pipelines Leah mentioned before? This is where those come into play. Each contents uses the hardware abstraction layer to draw itself by instructing the GPU to execute the render pipeline containing the shaders we actually want to use. And really, that's it. Those commands are executed using the graphics API, and then the resulting texture gets displayed to the screen. But there's one huge detail I haven't covered yet. Those shaders in the render pipeline also need to get compiled down to instructions that the GPU can execute, and this process is very expensive. In Skia, this compilation process happens at runtime. Right on the frame, the pipeline actually needs to be used to render something. This usually causes the frame to go way over budget, resulting in a noticeable stutter. We often refer to this problem as shader compilation jank. Impeller vastly improves on this issue by performing the most expensive part of this compilation ahead of time. And this is where the last component of Impeller comes in. When the Flutter engine is built, all of Impeller shaders get compiled into bundles using Impeller's offline shader compiler called Impeller C. In walking through Impeller's architecture, you've seen that Flutter really has complete control over how it renders graphics. Flutter isn't subject to the architectural or design limitations imposed by platform-specific UI toolkits because Flutter doesn't even use them. Instead, Flutter's engine talks directly to the graphics driver. This is what allows you to build rich, unique apps that behave exactly how you want on any platform. This lack of dependencies also makes Flutter a great solution for embedded use cases like automotive dashboards, IoT, and digital signage. Now that you have an idea of what's happening under the hood, let's highlight some of the key architecture decisions that we made that makes Impeller a great renderer for Flutter applications. So like Brandon mentioned, one huge benefit that Impeller offers is eliminating jank from compiling those programs called shaders. To do so, Impeller doesn't generate shaders in the same way that Skia does. Instead, Impeller has a set of handwritten shaders compiled in advance but you might be worried that initializing a bunch of pre-compiled shaders could mean slower startup times or bigger Flutter app sizes. To prevent this, Impeller uses alternative rendering techniques that leverage a much smaller, simpler set of shaders compared to the many specialized shaders that Skia dynamically generates. Another reason why Impeller offers great performance is the way we implement anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is the art of smoothing out jagged edges of drawn elements so that they look more natural. Impeller uses something called MSAA to perform this work, which is present across all devices supported by Flutter. It's pretty cheap to perform, and it produces excellent quality results on modern mobile hardware.
Another thing we focused on is how Impeller implements clipping. When rendering widgets, Flutter frequently uses clip masks to cut out shapes. So it's really important that this process is efficient. Impeller specifically takes an approach that leverages hardware features to ensure that clipping is super fast. Remember earlier when I mentioned those special checks? One is for something called the stencil buffer. Now we won't go into too much detail, but basically as Impeller draws the pixels for the clip thing, it tells the GPU to check the stencil and filter away all the pixels that aren't part of the filled shape. This means that even if a clip is really complicated, like the ones used to create these kaleidoscope animations, it's still a pretty cheap operation. So we can see some really huge performance improvements. On the left-hand side, we see Flutter pre-impeller, and it's rendering at about seven frames per second. And on the right side, impeller renders at about 60 frames per second. So we just talked about some of the design choices in impeller. For most Flutter developers, this means you'll see more predictable frame times when you use impeller. But for those that are interested in more advanced rendering use cases, Impeller also aims to offer a launch pad that allows you to solve for other graphical needs. For example, earlier this year at Flutter Forward, we showed off a proof of concept 3D scene graph built directly on top of Impeller's hardware abstraction layer called Impeller Scene. Impeller Scene has its own contents in the entity's framework, and it draws 3D objects using the same kinds of render pipelines we talked about earlier. Now, there are tons of consequential decisions that go into building renderers, and while we can certainly build 3D renderers that are useful and make smart trade-offs, no one renderer can solve every use case perfectly. And so as a next step for this, we're actively experimenting with ways to surface more control over rendering in the Flutter framework, so that anyone in the Flutter community can build their own rendering packages and create custom render pipelines that integrate seamlessly with the rest of the widget ecosystem. Impeller Scene is a proof of concept and a showcase for the kinds of developer experiences we're seeking to enable with this effort. With that in mind, let's take a look at the demo widgets. Basically, everything is centered around a special widget called Scenebox. Scenebox takes a node, which can be created from a 3D model that's added to your Flutter app's asset bundle. Nodes can be composed together to form a tree, just like normal Flutter widgets. Here, I'm wrapping the asset with another node that applies a rotation. You can add the same asset to the scene as many times as you want, and Flutter will know to only load the asset once and reuse it to inexpensively render copies, kind of like how image assets work. And you can even play animations built into the asset that were authored using 3D modeling software like Blender or Maya. And since Scenebox is just a regular Flutter widget, any of these node or node animation properties can also be animated in exactly the same way that you would animate anything else in your build methods. And of course, Hot Reload just works. Simply export the file from your 3D modeling software and Flutter does the rest. With just these tools, it's possible to construct rich interactive scenes composed from many different assets. Again, this is the kind of fluttery experience we're seeking to enable as we surface more control over rendering thanks to Impeller. So we just gave you an overview of Impeller and we went under the hood to show just how Flutter renders your widgets to the device screen. But that's not all. Today, we're super excited to announce that Impeller is now the default renderer on iOS for the stable version of Flutter. So upgrade Flutter and try it out. And if you want to see Impeller in action, you can install GSkinner's Wondrous app. Right now, Wondrous uses Impeller on iOS, but we're looking forward to the next version of Wondrous, which will include Android support for Impeller. We're really excited about where Impeller is headed and the new rendering capabilities that we can start bringing to Flutter. And we hope you are too.